Good afternoon everyone. Welcome to the first webinar of the year 2014. My name is Minakshi and on behalf of NEN and Watwani Foundation, I would like to invite you all for this webinar and also introduce our sp expert speaker, Mr. Abhay Dikshit. He is an engineer and a postgraduate in management. He has about 40 years of industry experience including 30 years as an entrepreneur in B&B selling, B2B selling and negotiating. He also teaches entrepreneurship courses and negotiation skills for MDP programs for IIMs Ahmedabad and associated with Goldman Sachs ISB Hyderabad for 10,000 women entrepreneurs program as mentor for past five years. Presently, he is a director on Tarang Engineering Private Limited Nagpur since 1997 and was at Grand Tools Private Limited since 1989 to 2005 as director commercial responsible for marketing, HR, account including government interface, excise, sales tax, income tax, etc. and purchasing. He is going to discuss on the topic the importance of negotiation skills. Negotiation skills is an integral part of management curriculum and management development program in companies and classrooms. Here's our opportunity to learn. Before I hand over the floor to, the, to Mr. Dikshit, there are a few reminders for the audience. You will be on mute. You may ask a question by typing the panel provided. Over to you, Mr. Dikshit. You can start the presentation now. Thank you, Minakshi. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, one request before we start. Uh, please take out a sheet of paper and a pencil or a pen. I will be asking you some questions during my talk and request you to write down your comments or views before I dwell on that issue. Uh, I will give you about 10 to 20 seconds to write down your views and comments and then I will dwell on the issues that I am raising. Okay. Let me ask you a question. Which one activity consumes maximum time in our life? Will you take about 10 to 15 seconds to write down that? Please. Which one activity consumes maximum time in our life? Okay, I am sure you have already done that. Considering one third of our time we spent on sleeping, many would opt for it as the right answer. I am not considering breathing as it does not consume any time but happens simultaneously with other activities. I dare to suggest that negotiations will compete well with sleep for that honor. Are you surprised? Okay, let me explain. All of us are involved in negotiations whether we like it or not. Whether we are entrepreneurs or employees, engineers or politicians, artists or plumbers, academicians or vegetable vendors, we negotiate most of the time and on various issues. We are involved in negotiations at various levels all around us on multiple issues of different intensities. For example, we negotiate with boss, colleagues, juniors, customers, suppliers, associates like auditors, consultants, government agencies, environmental activists and society in general. That is on the, in the office or on the job. And in personal life, we negotiate with parents, siblings, spouse, children, relatives, friends, neighbors, shopkeepers, car salesmen, real estate developers and so on and on. And finally, let us not forget the person with whom we negotiate most, ourselves. Each one of us negotiates with oneself. Huh. Do you remember in the morning when the alarm, alarm rings at 5.30 or 6, we negotiate with ourselves whether we should take a small nap for 5 minutes more. That's also a negotiation with ourselves. When we are alone or with others, we negotiate with ourselves about what to do next, what to choose, what to buy. So we do negotiate with ourselves also. And let us look at what activities can be called negotiations. Generally, we think that we are negotiating when we sit across or call our business counterpart to grab that deal or make an agreement or sit down with the family 
to decide holiday plans. In my view, you start negotiations when you communicate with your associate every time. Ditto for the family members. For example, when you are leaving for office, you casually tell your spouse, I would love to go to a hill station next time we are holidaying. Well, the vacation is still maybe one and a half or two months away. Now, let me ask you another question. What is a good negotiation? What is a good communication? Sorry, what's a, what is a good communication? Will you please take about 20 seconds to write down what you think is a good communication? Okay, I hope you have done that. Some may say that the sender should communicate in easy to understand language, gestures, what he or she wants to convey to the sender. To the convey to the receiver, sir. Or sir, say, hello, uh, sir. Roshni, uh, Roshni writes is when we are able to convey others what we want to say. Uh, Abhinash, uh, he wants to say our idea understood by other party. Srikant says communicating and making the other person understand exactly the same way we want them to understand. No, sorry, I could not get that. Uh, when you ask a question, what is again? yes? When you asked uh, what is good yeah. communication, uh, Rohini says yeah. it is when we are able to convey others what we want to say. Abhinash says okay. our idea understood by other party clearly. Uh, Shrikant yeah. says communicating and making the other person understand exactly same way as we want them to understand. Shahid says okay. convey the right message and Sunaya says we get what we want and Kunal says getting satisfactory result convincing the opponent when the other interprets Excellent. in the same way. Yeah. Uh, okay. Now I will, uh, Minakshi, I will take up what Kunal said. Can you just repeat that one? Kunal said getting satisfactory results. Yeah. Now when Kunal says that we should be getting satisfactory results or I think earlier Lakshmi said we get the desired results or something like that. You know, one of them said that. So actually what they are saying is that we want the other party to understand what we mean or what we want to convey and act accordingly or accept our contention of whatever we are doing. Now if we take Kunal's definition or slightly modified one of that, it means that whenever you communicate, it's a negotiation. If not in all, all the time, almost all times, when we communicate, we are actually negotiating. Because we, don't, we just don't want the other party to understand what we are saying, but we want the other party to act accordingly or accept our contention or the concept that we are passing across. If we tell the boss that, look, I want to go at 5 o'clock because there is an emergency, and the boss says, yes, I understand you want to go at 5 o'clock, but you can't go today. Obviously the communication was understood but not effective or a good communication. But if the boss says yes, you can go at 5 o'clock, obviously it means that your communication has achieved the desired result. And this is the reason why I, pref I prefer to say that almost all communications that we do, whether with others or with ourselves, are negotiations. Now decide for yourself if we if this concept of good communication as is just like negotiations, is that right for you? If we accept this that that is a negotiation, that almost all communications become negotiations. And then certainly then negotiation competes well with sleep for the most time consuming activity in our life. However, the amount of time people spend consciously on improving our skill in this area is nowhere near the time we spend on learning other skills like driving or swimming. I said consciously because we do it subconsciously, subconsciously all the time. With a new boss, 
we we come to conclusion whether she is strict or lenient and adjust our behavior accordingly. Even a child decides to just cry or throw a tantrum when it wants something. It all depends on whether a strict parent is around or an indulgent grandparent. Grandparent is there. So as I said earlier, we don't spend, normally people don't spend as much time on learning negotiation skills as much as other skills like driving or swimming. Though it is such an important skill, academicians and practitioners have only recently, I mean in the last 30-35 years, started codifying the best, best practices. The amount of work done over this period in Harvard and other universities is substantial. When I attended the B school in early 70s, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> learning communication skills in classroom was new. Was, skill was considered at that time something very inherent and inborn. Today, in many management schools, negotiation skill is a compulsory or elective subject. And also many uh, corporates are today doing workshops on negotiation skills for their employees. <clears throat> we find these negotiations difficult or easy depending on our skills and ability. Some find it difficult to negotiate with friends and close ones, whereas others find it difficult to negotiate with strangers. Some find it easy to negotiate with both. Now let us look at, we have looked at negotiation at the moment. Now let us see what is a skill. It can be described as an ability to apply the knowledge for better performance. I will repeat this. A skill can be described as ability to apply the knowledge for better performance. I am sure all of you know Sachin Tendulkar, <clears throat> but do you know who is Ramakant Asrekar? He was his first coach in school when he and Vinod Kamli made the record of part partnership of 600 odd runs. So maybe Ramakant Asrekar knows as much about batting as Tendulkar. However, he could not have been able to apply it as well as Tendulkar. Many times we develop skills even without knowing the process at, con at conscious level. Can one describe how to balance on a bicycle? We, vaguely we can say that we shift the weight from left to right or right to left depending on the body inclination, turning radius, speed and so forth. However, one will not be able to describe the mathematical relationship between these factors. But still we learn that skill. Another good example of skill development is from the Second World War. In the Second World War, the radar system was not developed very well. So it was difficult for ammunition, uh, it was difficult for soldiers to identify the plane at a far away, whether it is ours or it is an enemy plane. However, the British uh, government found that there were some people who were able to identify the plane, whether it is ours or enemies, from a very far distance. And then they wanted these people, these experts, to train juniors. However, they found that the juniors could not really, they could not train the juniors really because they did not have any system. It was just learned on a subconscious level. So then what they did was, they made the training stand in front of the expert. And the trainee will announce whether the incoming plane was enemies or our own. And then the expert behind him will either reinforce saying that yes he is right or will say no it is wrong and it is the other plane. Now when this happened repeatedly, the trainee got trained. Not really knowing how he got trained but he got trained and he became an expert. So what we see from this example is that we can become an expert only when we practice. So even after knowing the negotiation techniques and tools, it will be important for us to practice this, this consciously for some time unless they become, till the time they become part of our nature. So practicing it is very important. 
So we so just knowing the negotiation tools is not enough. We need to practice it, analyze the outcomes, and make changes on the next occasion. Now, why do we think that the negotiation is important in life? I would like you to write down on your piece of paper. Please write down why you think the negotiation skills are important. Yeah, Minakshi, any views? Give me one moment, sir. I'll uh, find out what all attendees have written. Why do we think that the negotiation skills are important for us? To get better, uh, to get better offer or not leaving value on the table, by Weber, Kunal says yeah. to achieve uh, to achieve yeah. results in your favor. Raghuvendra says to help us get what we want. Uh, Kunal again says to get yeah. desired outcomes to lead to take good decisions. Negotiations is are important to get or achieve what we want. It's called practical implementation of implication of things to convey our ideas effectively. Yeah. effectively to others and to put our view in front of yes. people. Yes. And now all these all these answers are to the point, but let me give you another view on this, uh, which is which complements what you people have, what Kunal and others have been saying. In life we do not get what we deserve, but we get what we negotiate for. <clears throat> and that is why the negotiation skills are very important. Okay, now here is the definition of negotiation skills. You can have a look at it. The process by which we voluntarily search terms to obtain what we want from somebody who wants something from us. As you see, the keywords are voluntarily and search terms. So these are the two aspects of negotiations which are very important. One is it should be voluntary and the second thing is it should be searching for terms as to how to do the exchange. Okay. <clears throat> now let us look at another aspect of to understand this. How Who is a skillful negotiator? Who is a skillful negotiator? I would like you to write down that in 15-20 seconds and uh, then we will start again. 15 seconds. Who you think is a skillful negotiator? has good communication skills. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who, who can communicate well, who identifies other person and his views and respond accordingly to that. Okay. Uh, who can make other people think what you think. A person who gets what he wants, maintaining a win-win situation to both the parties. Yeah. Who achieves uh, results in his favor through uh, through talking. Yeah. Okay. Now, all these are very reasonable and rational expectations to call somebody a skillful negotiator. But I will add something to this. Uh, let us say that person A is represent company X in a negotiation and then there is a person B 
representing company Y in negotiation. So A and B are negotiating on behalf of company X and company Y. If we want to find out if A is a skillful negotiator, what are the conditions we should look at? The first obvious one is that the company X, which is employing negotiator A, says at the end of the deal that yes, he is a skillful negotiator, he is a good negotiator. So this is the common one what we talk about. The second one, equally essential, is that the negotiator B, who is negotiating with A on behalf of another company, should also say that A is a good negotiator. This is a tough condition. The other party should say that yes, A is a good negotiator. So A, not only company X should say that A is a good negotiator, but even B, who is negotiating with him, and the company Y together, they should also say that he is a good negotiator. So this is the second condition. But the third condition is much more equally important which we need to look at and that is the agreement signed gets implemented without much nitpicking at a later date. So the success of a nego negotiation does not depend really on what you sign. It really depends on what is implemented. How many times it happens that we think that it was a good negotiation and afterwards we find that the implementation has problems. And that is the reason why it is important to realize that a good negotiator not just signs the deal, he makes the other party happy and thirdly the agreements get implemented without much problem. So if A is able to achieve all these three things, then we will be able to call him a skillful negotiator. Let me repeat again. Number one, the company which employs him says that he is a good negotiator. The person and the company with whom he is negotiating also says that he is a good negotiator. And the agreements get implemented without much problem. So these are the three conditions which decide whom to call a skillful negotiator. <clears throat> now let us look at one more issue. On, on which occasions do we negotiate? on which occasions do we negotiate okay uh, I will not uh, I will not ask you the answers but I will just start with something let us look at a situation where you have gone to a five-star hotel for a dinner maybe with your spouse or with your friend or somebody now two of you have dinner and you spend something like four thousand rupees or four and a half thousand rupees or three thousand rupees on the dinner would you negotiate with the waiter or with the hotel that you would like to have a discount? Obviously no or majority of them at least will not do that. But then if you are, <coughs> have you negotiated or have you heard of negotiations happening at international duty free shops? Again the answer for most of the people is obviously no. But let Let's look at the first couple which had gone for dinner at a five star hotel. If the lady had asked for a discount or the man had asked for a discount and even if he had got 2% discount, he would have saved something like 60 or 80 rupees. But the, the lady when she goes next day to a shop, uh, to vegetable vendor to buy the vegetables, she will negotiate in all probability and might save a couple of rupees or three rupees or five rupees when she is negotiating for vegetables. So she did not negotiate when she went to a five star hotel for dinner, though the saving could have been far more, but goes next day morning to vegetable better and then negotiates and saves two or three rupees. So it is not necessarily that she will negotiate when she finds that the saving is likely to be much larger. But look at the same hotel. Now the couple is throwing a party for 100 friends. Now they will definitely go and negotiate with the hotel about the dinner. So you see, we actually the conclusion that I come to with these things is that we negotiate at places and on occasions 
where it is socially acceptable to negotiate. Like at a vegetable vendor or when you are throwing a party at a hotel, definitely you would like to negotiate because you will get it. You know that it is socially acceptable. And this is what many shopkeepers play on because when you start to negotiate, they make a big face as if you are making a blunder and try to dissuade from negotiating. So if we cut down the number of occasions when we feel that yes, we cannot negotiate, there is a good chance that you will be able to negotiate on many occasions. I am not going into the details of this, but I know a few instances of negotiations at international duty free shops. I was involved in one of them, though I must admit it was accidental, but it did happen. And somebody, one of my participants in one of the, another workshop told me an incident how he negotiated with a uh, at international duty free shop and got a better deal. So the conclusion from that is this, your willingness to listen to no improves your strength or improves your power of negotiations. Don't get caught down by what social, social society thinks or what are the social rules, what you think are the social rules. So more places you are willing to negotiate, more likely that you will get better deals. It includes various places. Okay, yeah. We will go to the next one. So there are different approaches to deal making besides negotiations. Can you just recall, recollect them? Approaches to deal making, because basically negotiation is deal making. So which are the other approaches to deal making? Here is one. It's an auction. Okay? You actually negotiate with others in a way you can say, but it's a very different type than negotiations. The second one is tender. The third one is the price tag. You know, there is a price tag and you you, say, you take it or you leave it, like you go to a five star hotel and have dinner. Possibly that is what applies. And the last one is the negotiation. So there are four approaches which we can take for deal making. Now these are the four ones. Okay, now what is the alternative to negotiations? I would like you to think for a second, a couple of seconds and then write down this. What is the alternative to negotiations? Remember, not to negotiate is also a negotiation strategy. So not to negotiate is not an alternative to negotiations. Minakshi, any? Hello? Hello? Uh, yeah. Uh, so, Suresh says discussion, Sugat says uh, discussion, discussion. Discussion? Yeah. And then some... Uh, Speak a little loudly because I am not able to hear. Uh, Suga, uh, Suresh says it is discussion and then Sugat yeah. says having some leverage over others. Uh, Adit says, okay. Aditi, Aditi says uh, uh, consensus and uh, compromise. Yeah by special offers, written communication. Litigation. Written communication and having a different, better yeah. option. Okay. All right. Now, uh, many of these things that you have mentioned, they are all part of negotiation, including the last one which says having a better option. If you have a better option, you will walk away from negotiations that means you are deciding not to negotiate with that party, which is also part of the negotiations. The actual alternative to negotiation is this. It's violence. If you remember, we talked of, when we talked of negotiations, we said it is voluntary. Whereas in violence, it is not voluntary. It is forced. So violence is the alternative to the negotiations. It is not voluntary, that's why it is an alternative. 
all the other options mentioned by the participants were still option at voluntary they were not compulsory so violence is the alternative to the negotiation but it is not a good alternative one because it might result in various uh, problems but the one which can be easily understood is the violence does not create value I think somebody mentioned earlier while giving answers that to create value. Yes, in negotiations we try to in create value. But in violence, we cannot create value. In violence, what happens is at the best, at best, the value gets transferred from one party to another without any creation of new value or additional value. Yeah, but in most of the cases, when violence is used, in fact there is loss of value. The loss could be in terms of physical damage, it could be in terms of efforts required and the fear that gener it is generated in our mind. So all those are value reduction events or value reduction processes. So the violence is alternative to negotiations but it is not a good option because it just transfers the value at best and in most of the cases it reduces the uh, value. Now which are the elements of negotiation? Let us look at the elements of negotiation. Uh, negotiation has four stages as we go along. We see that the negotiations are in, is in four stages. These four stages of negotiation are preparation. The first is preparation. The second one is investigation. The third one is debate and the fourth one is closing the deal. I will repeat that again. The first one is preparation, the second one is investigation, third one is debate and the fourth one is closing the deal. Now we will not be able to go into all these details of these because of lack of time. We don't have enough time. Uh, 30 to 40 minutes is not really, uh, but then preparations is some of you must be knowing about all this that we prepare for negotiations by collecting information and then etc etc. Investigation is when you discuss with the other party to understand their requirements, their interests. Then in debate we understand what we want to negotiate, what we want to exchange and what we want to get back. And what can be, what can be negotiated for what items can be negotiated for other items. And then closing the deal is actually signing of the agreement. So this is generally the four stages of negotiation. Uh, uh, one more thing which I would like to emphasize here is in the preparation we set the goals. Too often people go to negotiations with without setting a goal for themselves and very rarely by writing it down on a piece of paper. Generally they have some vague idea about what they expect from the negotiations. This creates more uncertainties during negotiations. My suggestion is that whenever you are going for an important negotiation, please set your goal, goals, not goal. Actually you need two figures. And preferably the one, the first one is the minimum you would like to get out of the deal. It may be in terms of rupees or it could be some other terms like warranty, delivery, etc, etc. So one is the minimum that you want to get from the deal. And the second one is what is, what you are likely to get which should be better than the first one. So you should try to aim higher by saying look this is what I would like to achieve but this is the minimum that I will have to achieve. I cannot go below this. Now how to set the goals for yourself, how to go about it is again uh, a detailed exercise which one can go into. <clears throat> if you are selling a motorcycle, second hand car, your, your car you want to sell, you can say that look I must get minimum 1,50,000 rupees for this car. But then you will say, look, I will try to get 175 because 150 is the bare minimum. I will try to do, I would like to get something better than that. So I will set a target of 175 but willing to scale it down to 150 if I find that the market conditions are not very favorable. So this is the two, two goals which I am talking about. This will help you to avoid too low and also this, if you can discuss the target with your family and colleagues in advance, it will be an additional motivation for you 
to do a better job negotiations. Okay. Um, Minachi, do we have another two three minutes? Sir, so you can carry on for yeah yeah you can carry on for two three more minutes. Yeah, another another not more than five minutes. I'll do that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Then second part of that is the styles of negotiation. Uh, what style do we act? We, we achieve, do achieve, we adopt. Do we become very aggressive? Do we become very subdued? Or do we become neutral or remain neutral throughout the negotiations? This again depends on various factors. We will not be going to that. But this is one area we should be really studying and understanding what are our views. Then there are a lot of psychological insights into negotiations. Uh, these uh, psychologists have done a lot of ex experiments for various other reasons but which can be used in negotiations. Uh, which, which are definitely very useful if you can use them in the negotiations. Uh, I would just like to take one of that to talk to you and that is about the goal setting. Uh, and that is where I will uh, close the, uh, after that I will take one more point and then close the deal. <coughs> you see, the goal setting happens at unconscious, subconsciously at various times. And sometimes absolutely irrelevant things affect us in goal setting. In an experiment done in the United States, uh, students were asked to write down the last two digits of their social security number before starting the auction. And they found that the students with low value, low, low numbers on the social security, like 00 to 20, in the auction bid much lower than the students who had high figures, like 88 to 90, 88 to 90, or 70, 79 to 90. So what we really see is that such an irrelevant figure like social security number digits affected their bidding at an auction. So this is something which is very difficult to believe, but this is a recorded study. This was done at MIT. So obviously this has a lot of authority on this. So our goal setting we need to really look at as to how we are setting the goals. And there are various techniques for doing it and uh, it can be done very comfortably. And then let me come to the last point. There are various tools and techniques which we are used for learning the negotiation skills. And most of these techniques can be used in all types of situations. Some tools have been developed for specific situations also. Now let me mention the specific situations which are available. How to improve the relationship in negotiations. How to handle negotiations with individuals whom you like? How to handle negotiations when you hate the person you are negotiating with? Or how to handle tantrums when people get angry, throw insults, shout at you? How do we handle that? So there are specific tools for this. Then again, multi-part negotiations, multi-issue negotiations. When you are doing multi-party, multi-issue, multi-party, multi-issue negotiations, how to handle this situation? And then also, again, suppose a boss is handling a conflict between his two juniors. How does he handle that? There are specific tools developed for all this. And the last one is the most interesting, and that is how to handle lies and deception in negotiation. All of us come across lies and deception in negotiation. So how to handle that? And along with that, the, another issue on this is the ethics in negotiations. What is ethical in negotiations and what is not ethical in negotiations? So all these issues have negotiation uh, tools available, specific tools available which can be used. So I think I will, with this I will close. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you. If you have any questions, I would like to take them. Yes, uh, that was a very interesting session. And a couple of attendees, uh, attendees have a question to ask. Um, Um, Webhav uh, says, uh, there is no permanent friend or enemy, there are only permanent interests. So uh, what if in a negotiation, uh, he seems to be losing the deal and there is no way of a win-win situation. How can we handle that kind of uh, situation? Uh, <clears throat> uh, we, we tend to look at only 
various things, many times we tend to look at the things at the end when things are going wrong. But actually it is important that we go with the four stages of negotiations which were preparation, debate, investigation and then making offers. Now what happens is if you go through this process correctly, then by the time you investigate and you debate, you debate and investigate and have understanding of what the other party is looking at, one thing is your chances of negotiations uh, making a deal improves. And the second is, it is not necessary that you have to enter into a deal or make a deal every time. Please remember that even as a salesman, we don't have 100% market share, so we are likely to lose some deals anyway. So it is very important to decide what is going to be my walk away price, you know, or the minimum what I ex we expect or minimum we should agree on. And if the other party has a better alternative, then obviously the other party is not going to make the deal. And similarly the case with us, we will not make the deal if we have a, if we have a better alternative. So there will be some deals where you will find it is difficult to achieve the deal. Because even after doing the negotiation, understanding, developing the skills, one will not be able to do deals in 100% of the cases. There will be still some cases which will go out. All we have to do is to play the number game and say, in, in the, I am getting deals done in enough number of cases. I am getting deals done at terms which I am happy with. And these deals are getting implemented well, so I am able to get things done in most of the places where I want, but not every time. But it is very difficult to uh, give an exact answer as to when we should say no or yes, unless I have the full details of the case. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, the Kunal wants to know uh, how to avoid the situation of penny wise and pound foolish. Penny? Penny wise and pound foolish. Hello? Hello, can you hear me sir? Uh, money, uh, it's a penny wise pound foolish. Okay, penny yes. wise pound foolish. Yeah. Uh, Kunal, uh, what you are asking is a very interesting question because this is what I was referring to earlier when I said we have to make sure that the deal is implemented. Now, uh, let me give you an example here. Einstein was hired by Princeton University in 1932. He was in Europe. And uh, Princeton University in US uh, wrote to him because there were no emails at that time, nor there was voice over the in, uh, internet. Uh, he asked them how much he wants. And he said $3,000 per year in 1932. Princeton University wrote back saying that we will offer you $12,000 per year. Now, why they wrote $12,000 when he was asking for $3,000? That is because they knew that if, they offer, if, he, if he comes here with $3,000, he will find that the others are being paid well, and then more than that, and then he will obviously get dissatisfied and will not be able to deliver the results. He will not be able to uh, be totally motivated to do his job. Now this is what was, this is the reason why I was, refer, I was referring earlier as to who is a good negotiator. A good negotiator not only is, the other party should say that he is a good negotiator and the deal should get implemented well. If we take our eyes off implementation of the deal at a later date, then normally this penny by pound foolish thing happens. We tend to save some money in negotiations and then realize that look that fellow is not happy with the deal afterwards and then it is very difficult to retrieve the situation. Right, it's very important to ensure that the other side is happy, other side is willing to implement the deal that both of you have agreed on, and at the same time, you have got what you are looking for. Right, sir. Uh, Lokesh wants to know uh, that you talked about negotiation tools. He wants to know uh, what are those tools and can you name them, name a few of them and explain a bit. Oh, sorry, I, please read that again. Uh, you mentioned about the negotiation schools. Uh, hello, can you hear me now? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, you mentioned about negotiation tools uh, in your presentation. Can you explain yeah, those tools? tools? Techniques. Yeah, can you can you uh, talk more a little yes, bit more about? There are tools available. Like yeah, there are many tools available. Like Batna, and there is a walk away price. Then the zone of agreement. And then there are many techniques which you can use when you are actually negotiating. Like, you know, how do you communicate? Do you ask more questions while you are negotiating? So these are the tools which can be used. But unfortunately, it is not possible to explain them in a uh, few sentences. And there are many tools, number one. 
And number two is, uh, it is not possible to explain in few sentences. We will have to really sit down across and do a workshop on that. Then I will be able to explain the rules. Because there are many number one and each one is uh, reasonably complicated enough to and not, I'm not able to explain that in just few seconds. Okay, so uh, so for for the next session, if they have, uh, if we uh, can manage to get you on one more time, is there any book that you recommend for them to study so that you know they have a fair enough idea before they come here and they can be more much more active while uh, conversations? Yeah, there are many there are many books which are available on negotiation. What I will try to do is to I will send you some names in the next few days. Minakshi, right. Yeah, okay. I'll put it on the YouTube. Uh, I'll tag those books on YouTube so that everybody can uh, get an access to the names. Uh, Jotendra uh, Sharma wants to know, um, I'm from a company and want to sell some product. Then I would of course want that the other party do, doesn't nego negotiate on my product. How can I prevent that except for costing the product? While costing the product, he wants to negotiate, but he doesn't want others to negotiate with him. Is no, no, that I'm not able to get this question. Can you just repeat that again? Uh, Jyotindra is into uh, selling and uh, he usually faces this problem when people start negotiating with him. How can he counteract on huh? those negotiations? Is he talking about contract negotiation? Yeah. Uh, look, uh, it is very difficult Jitender, for me to tell you the details right now about the such an issue because it is a very complex issue. It requires more of uh, much more time because I need to understand what exactly is the issue you have because what you have mentioned, yes, it's, I can understand the general but there must be something very specific you have in mind and unless I have that specific I will not be able to give you a reply. That is my problem at the moment. Okay. Uh, Karunakar wants to know how to handle hard negotiators on price and value where there are quite few options at his hand. That means uh, if a customer of his has quite a number of uh, uh, options for the same product. Minakshi, Minakshi, just one second. Yeah. No, Minakshi, just one second. Yeah. Minakshi, just one second. Yes, yes. Uh, will you repeat that? Yes. Uh, Karunakar wants to... Sir, can you hear me properly? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. Uh, Karnaka wants to know, uh, he, uh, what if a customer has options, various options for the same product and Karnaka is selling, suppose, product number A and there are options B, C, D also. How can you convince a customer to choose option A? How can negotiation skills help him there? Uh, Karunakar, uh, if you have all products A, B, C, D and you want the buyer to buy products A, F, now the, the issue is does the customer need product A? And that is where, you know, I talked about the debate and investigation. That is where you need to find out what the customer really wants or what is the customer looking for. The negotiation skills does not, do not give us uh, uh, sort of power or ability to sell to customers something which she doesn't want or she doesn't want or she doesn't prefer as much as the other product. The customer will finally choose what or he or she wants. The trick in negotiations is to understand what exactly the customer is looking for. What is what is his interest? What why is he handling this buying this product or service or why is he negotiating now? And what is he looking for? And then give the least of what he or she wants but still make him satisfy or her satisfy and get what we are looking for. So it is not that we will be able to push whatever, whichever product we want on the customer even if we have the reasonably good negotiation skills. Okay. We have to see what the customer wants and that is why the debate and investigation stages are very important. Okay, now he wants to know, can you specifically, uh, you know, pinpoint what is hard negotiator, you know, what, how hard negotiators on price and value. How to handle hard negotiators on price and value. How to handle hard negotiators on price and value, right? Yeah, they need the product. They uh, need the product. Hard negotiator. Pardon? Uh, they, the customers need the product. Hello? How, hello. Um, the, pro, the customers need huh. the product. Uh, however, they have options. but. The company wants to convince the, uh, 
the customer on price and value of the product and negotiate it along with it. Yes. <clears throat> okay. You see, <clears throat> when you are uh, when we are interacting with the customer from the day one, that's what I said in the beginning that we start negotiations when first time we talk to the customer or send an email. That is the time onwards you are starting negotiations. Now, that is from there onwards we need to understand what the customer is looking for and create value in the mind of the buyer or the customer. Now, this is created in with using various techniques. For example, uh, I will just tell you one technique which is used. You see, the customers will not believe you much when you actually sit down across the table after you give the quotation. Then whatever you say, they feel that you are trying to extract something from them. So the, the amount of faith the customers have in you at that point onwards is much less than they had earlier. So you can create that value in the initial stages itself. Now for example, many salespeople have the habit of going to the customers and saying that we will be very competitive. That's a very common sentence we hear from the salespeople. But that is something which hints and gives idea to the customer that they are, you are willing to negotiate and go down substantially on the price. So he keeps telling you that look the other party is offering me this, now you be competitive and offer me lower price. So as my suggestion to the salespeople always is never say that we will be competitive. Because the moment you say you are, you are going to be competitive, your customer is going to take a real or imaginary price from the competitor and say look you match this price. Our stand should be that look this is the product and the, what the price we are charging is very reasonable or very attractive for you. Because my product has these advantages and this is what you are looking for. So you negotiate with the customer from time you start first speaking to him or start sending an email. So that is the time onwards you need to create value. And the sentence I told you that the salespeople saying that look we will be very competitive, I think it's a very uh, statement which really is very harmful for the salesperson. So avoid such a similar statement, that is what I would suggest. Right sir, that was all about the questions. No more questions from the attendees. Uh, thank you all for asking such nice questions. Uh, thank you very much for this interesting session. The next webinar will be conducted on 22nd of January on using agile thinking to make better and faster decisions. If you find this session interesting, tweet at uh, tweet us at uh, NEN India, and the recorded version of the webinar will be available on YouTube. Uh, the, the 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 YouTube channel we have is www.youtube.com/user/eclubNENonline/by/tomorrow. Uh, thank you very much for the interesting session. Thank you all our attendees for participating in the webinar. We are glad that the questions kept coming in and the pres uh, presentation recording of the session will be recorded soon. Thank you once again and have a nice evening. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.